Good day, Sven the Slayer here once again, and welcome back to Star Maid. This is episode 13 of my Practical Logic series, and in today's episode I'm going to be showing you how to build a shift register, and how to turn that into a combination lock. Okay, so what we have here before us is the basic shift register. What it does is every time it receives an input, it'll advance the signal down the line. And we can also have that uh, be reset. And with a little extra circuitry, you can also have it back off as well. So it can capable of going into two positions. And with this device, you can easily create a very compact combination lock. So this has 10 possible digits on it and you can expand it to the, this particular model as many as you want. There is no limits there and it's not very large and so you can make it, this one has a, a five digit combination lock so you can just imagine what all the possibilities are. I don't really feel like doing the math there but this one just has a combination of one, two, three, four, five and you see the light turned green and it is now unlocked and I will be showing you how to build both of these right now. Okay, so first up I'll show you how to build the standard shift register. And to do that we'll just need to place down a flip-flop for every step in the chain. And then I'll set up the reset switch first because that is the easiest. So we want to select every one of the flip-flops and place down an AND. And each of those ANDs get wired back into the flip-flops. Those ANDs are controlled by a button and you can see now that doesn't do anything but when any of these are high it'll complete the condition these ANDs need and they will turn high sending a signal to the flip-flop turning it off so that you can only turn off flip-flops you can't actually turn them on with this the next step is to set up the circuit to advance the signal down the chain. And to do that, we'll want to take each of the flip-flops and place down a knot as well as a delay. So next flip-flop, knot and delay. Next flip-flop, knot and delay. And then lastly, the last flip-flop only needs the knot as there is no step in the chain beyond that. So we'll also have to make sure that these knots are all in their proper state. So put down a button or an activator and then just turn that on and delete it. And that'll set the knots where they need to be. From there we want to take the knots. And so select the knot with C, put down an AND. And we want to do that for every link in the chain. And then we also want to take the delays and they go into the next link from them. And we'll need a button to control the whole thing. And this has to be a button. I, I did this with an OR originally for this circuit. And the way the game parses the logic, it was failing. But every time I've used a button, it works perfectly. And to do the OR, I'd need two delays here, which just makes it slower and annoying so this will work fine so you see that only the current selected T flip-flop will pulse you know, or the the next one in the chain to be selected will pulse so this is a you know functioning circuit we just have to complete it by wiring in the ANDs back into the T flip-flop so now you see that this one flashes because it's got the knot signal here that it needs and the pulse from this button. So it'll turn this one on, which will then turn on this delay, which will then pass its signal to the next chain, uh, the next AND, which also gets the signal from this knot. And then when it gets a signal from this button, it'll turn on high, turning this one on, going down the chain, and that is how this shift register works. So if all you want your shift register to do is advance and reset, which is all we need for the combination lock, you're done here. But I'll still show you how to 
set up the backing off system. So to back this off, we'll just want another button and another set of ands for each step of the chain. And these ands all go into the flip-flops as well. Except this time, they want a signal from the flip-flops they're getting wired into. And then we'll also need a um, select the not gate from this step of the chain and we want a delay and then that delay gets wired into the next step back into the AND. So C on the knot, place the delay, you can turn it on right away too. And this will enable us to back down the chain each time one of the you know, flip-flops is set so we can advance and then we can back off and it's as simple as that. That's not too difficult. I haven't yet had a use for uh, being able to back it off, but it's just good to know how to do. So next up I'll show you how to build the combination lock by compacting this shift register and adding a couple extra components. So to start off I want to build my control panel and I'm just gonna build something simple here. And that is this so we have one through nine and the reset next up I want to build the shift register by putting down a flip-flop for every link in the chain so here's a five digit combination lock and then set up the reset switch by selecting the reset button putting down our ands and then selecting each of the flip-flops and connecting them to the ands and then the ands back into the flip-flops. I know it's a little monotonous, but if you want to have multiple links in the chain, that's what you got to do. So the next step is to put down our control that will move the signal down the chain. And then select that and place down all of the ands. And every one of those ands gets wired into their respective flip-flops. So you see when I flip that, it'll toggle it. We just have to add the conditions later. And then every one of the buttons gets wired directly into that button controlling the shift register. So you can also see that you can easily add more buttons by just expanding this control panel and linking them to this button. So the number of possible combinations just grows exponentially. And now we'll just have to finish our shift register here by selecting the flip-flops and putting down a delay. Now you can put them next in chain so they get wired directly into the one beneath them, but I personally like keeping them in line here so when I copy and paste these uh, it is all self-contained and then I just have to connect this module into the next one and so on. So select the flip-flops and put down our delays and of course you do not need one on the last one and then those delays get wired into the next and from them so that'll step it forward we just need to lock out the circuit from uh, with the knot here so select the flip-flops put down a knot on each flip-flop and we'll also want to put down a button, select the button, shift V on all those knots so that we can put them in a high state which is where they need to be and then select each of the knots into the AND here for the start and now you can see that that shift register is done and that is all we need for this part of the thing. Next up we'll just need to be able to set up the memory and program it. Okay, so lastly, to turn this from a series of buttons into an actual combination lock, we'll just have to add a couple extra components, and that'll be the memory and then the conditional statement. So to add the memory, we just want to pretty much just add another reset switch here. So select your reset button and add another line of 
ands for one for every link in the chain and then those ands get wired into another set of flip-flops and then those flip-flops of course get wired back into the ands and then every one of those flip-flops gets wired into another and so that when they're all on that and will be high and that'll be what controls your circuit so now you can see that when all of these are high that's high and then the reset switch will also turn them off and then now we want to take the signal from here every time we move the shift register position you'll see that you get a pulse there so that's the pulse we want so select one of the ands and put an and for every link in the chain and then these ands all get wired across into the memory. So now anytime we push any button, the memory gets triggered. That's because we haven't programmed it yet. So programming it is a fairly simple task. Uh, the first thing we're going to need to do is take any button and we want to lay down a line of ORs. And this will, is what will determine that you're not pushing too many buttons at once because the original design of this you could actually brute force and press every button and <laughs> it would actually accept that as a combination. So you, we want to do that, uh, select every one of these buttons and wire them into our line of ORs here. It's a little tedious but it's not too difficult so you see that every time we press a button all the ores light up. And then lastly, to program it, we'll just need to, you know, choose your combination. I'm just going to use 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So you want to select your first button into the first digit. You want to select the AND and deselect the OR. And then same thing for the second digit. Select the AND, deselect the OR. Third digit, AND OR. Fourth digit, ON OFF. Fifth digit, if, you know, you're using five digits or however many digits you were using. And then the last step we need to do is take uh, any time these light up, we want a NOT on. So select every link or every OR in the chain and put a NOT on it. And of course, we'll also need to get these knots into their proper state and then wire them into the AND. So if this NOT ever turns off, this any of these ORs will not be met, their conditions will not be met. So now that should be it. We should be able to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and you see that the combination is correct and the light lights up. But if we go, say, hit 1 twice, and then 2, oh, we're on 4 now, 5, yes, you see that those two were incorrect, so they are not lit up. And if you attempt to brute force the thing, it will not accept that as a combination. Uh, one thing you can do is if you hit the button and then quick, you hit the correct button and then you quickly hit the wrong button, it'll still accept that as a combination because there's nothing uh, telling this flip-flop to not turn off. But if you hit the wrong button and then quickly hit the right button, you'll see that that one is not lit up. So that's just just one glitch in the system, but it's not that big of a deal. So that is the simple combination lock. And uh, one thing to note is in this configuration, if you know the exact configuration, say if you build this exactly how I built it, and you fly in here, you can actually trace, um, if you really know what you're doing, you can trace the paths back. Um, but it's, it's a little bit of a mess. I actually had to do this on one of my ships. Uh, I forgot the combination. I had to uh, pick, basically essentially pick the lock to unlock the system because I just didn't want to rip it apart. So now I'll show you how to add one last optional component to this system which is an enter button. So the first thing we're going to need to do is extend the shift register chain by one. So to do that we'll of course need to take the last flip-flop here and add a delay because only the last link in the chain doesn't need a delay. And then our flip-flop block as well and then we want to select the reset switch and add a AND which gets wired into the flip-flop which gets wired back into the AND and then we also want to take our input so select the input here into another AND which gets wired into the flip-flop as well. This delay here, the, the last delay, gets wired into the last AND 
And then we also want a knot off of our last flip-flop, which gets wired into the and. I've done this three times in this video already. Should be pretty easy by now. And of course, we want that knot in the proper position, and then that gets wired into our final condition statement here. So now if we type in one, two, three, four, five, you'll see that that's on, but if we hit too many, it is now off. So we'll just have to add our enter button, which is here, and wire that into the AND, and then we can take this into our uh, flip-flop, so that when the combination is correct and not overflowed, you can see that we can now toggle this. Now, to be safe, we want to uh, wire in a reset, because if you turn it on and then lock yourself out, you can't actually toggle it again. So we'll want a reset here. So select the reset button into an AND, and then that gets wired into and out of the flip-flop. So now we can actually clear that. Now if you want to change this from a toggle into a set and a lock, you'll want to take your flip-flop here into a knot, and then that knot into the AND. And of course we'll have to get that knot into the proper space. So now if we type in one, two, three, four, five, you'll see that we can hit enter and this is locked, your door is open or whatever. But if we hit it again, it doesn't actually toggle it until we reset the switch. And that also is benefit because if we hit one, two, three, four, five, and lock it, and then somebody comes up and hits the button, you'll see that it doesn't automatically unlock until we actually hit the reset and clear button. And you can add some more circuitry to it if you want. Um, so once it's unlocked, you have a, another button that actually opens and closes the door, depending on if this is unlocked or not. But that's uh, up to you. Now, I know this one was a little long, a little bit complicated, a little bit tedious, because we're doing the same thing five times, but it really does go a long way to show you that um, it's not too hard to add additional steps in the chain, and the more digits you have, the more secure the lock is going to be. And it's just, you know, you put some uh, permission modules on here, and you can actually have areas that are accessible through a lock, uh, a key combination that you give out to specific players, um, and whatnot like that. So... That'll about do it for this tutorial on my combination lock. I hope you learned something. Thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next video.